There is a growing concern that many species of our native wildlife are in real trouble. It's obvious that man's continuous encroachment on their habitat is having a detrimental effect. Now pollution and global warming is adding to their problem. Birds and animals on this island continent have developed in their own way. Many are totally different to the fauna of other countries. And this fact has always made them fascinating to overseas visitors. Many Australians accept our wildlife as just part of the landscape, but to get up close and personal with these creatures is a very different experience. But all is not well. Wildlife keepers are reporting disturbing changes. Many native species are showing signs of stress. The dedicated staff at Corumban Wildlife Sanctuary devote much of their time and skill to understanding the animals in their care. Let's hear from Matt Hingley, Life Science Curator at the Sanctuary, about some of their concerns. As kids we all grew up with frogs in our backyard and we haven't noticed gradually that they have declined. Scientists have brought to our attention that 33% of the world's amphibians have become extinct in the last 20 years. A further 44% are in rapid decline or currently under grave threat. Zoos and wildlife parks like Corumban Wildlife Sanctuary contribute efforts to securing their future and to sustaining populations of amphibians in captivity and identifying what these threats are. It's important that we convey these threats to the general community so that people are aware of the impact they're having upon the environment and the effects that has upon amphibian populations. Natalie Hill is one of our reptile keepers here at the sanctuary and she is dedicated to amphibians and dedicated to communicating their message to the next generation. I believe it's important to conserve Australian frogs, not only Australia's but globally as well, because they are barometers to our ecosystem. Now the reason I say barometer is because they absorb things through their skin, they absorb pollution, they absorb chemicals and they tell of what our environment is like today because they are jewels of our garden. In 1996 a disease was identified in the Tasmanian devil population in Tasmania and within 10 years we've lost 40,000 animals from the wild. We believe that to be half the world's population. Now that's a significant decline and if the population continues to decline at that rate the Tasmanian devil would be extinct within another 10 years from now. Our keepers not only dedicate their time, they dedicate their lives to the animals they work with and they are very passionate about ensuring that they can contribute to the future of these populations. We'd like our children and our children's children to still enjoy these species in the wild. Sarah Mulhall is our Australian native mammal keeper here and she is dedicated to securing the future of the Tasmanian devil in captivity at the moment. We'll pop over and say hello to Sarah and discuss with her some of the work that she's doing here at Corumban. Sure can. <laughs> Got a bit of a grumpy customer with me at the moment. All right. This is Stripey. Stripey's a three-year-old female Tasmanian devil. Uh, she is actually at the moment housed with a male, which is probably why she's a little bit upset. But uh, it is really important at the moment. Uh, these animals are part of an insurance population, uh, and and they really are the future of Tasmanian devils. Okay, good girl. And as you can see, she is a little bit upset, but um, she, she is basically doing a typical behavior of what a Tasmanian devil is going to be doing when in the presence of people, especially these animals, because these are wild caught Tasmanian devils. Maintaining relationships with reputable partners is a very important thing, and it has been a very important thing in the past. We are performing what we consider to be world first research on the echidna here at the sanctuary and we are doing that in collaboration with University of Queensland. Very little is known about the reproductive cycle of the echidna and this research will identify the peaks and troughs in the reproductive cycles of this species.
As zookeepers, we practice our techniques of husbandry and reproduction on what we term analogue species. Now the Coxon's fig parrot is an example of this at Kurumba Wildlife Sanctuary. The Coxon's fig parrot has not been sighted in the wild for many, many years and it's feared already that it is extinct. The double-eyed fig parrot is more common and it's an extremely close relative and it gives us an opportunity as keepers to develop those important husbandry skills and reproduction so that we may one day apply them to the Coxon's fig parrot. I started at Kurumban 10 years ago and I recall a poster that advertised the importance of saving the bilby. Queensland bilbies at that point in time numbered a mere 600 and in the 10 years I've been here current figures estimate that there's probably only 400 bilbies left in Queensland and unfortunately I'm not as optimistic and I think it's probably fewer than 400. It's a very important species, they're a beautiful and a magical species of Australian fauna and at Kurumban we make sure that we have an opportunity to display bilbies to the Australian public and children every day of the week. Huge ears, a bit like a bunny rabbit, to help him with hearing so that he can hear any predators that might be coming. Kurumban Wildlife Sanctuary is dedicated to working with the local community. It's everybody's obligation to ensure that our biodiversity and our local species survive. The local community for many years have been bringing injured and orphaned wildlife to the sanctuary and in some years more than 4,000 animals have been repaired or rehabilitated back to the wild. Michael Pine is our senior vet here at Kurumban and it's probably important that we pop over and have a look at some of the work that he does in the wildlife hospital. Hello, my name's Michael Pine, I'm the senior vet here at Kurumban Wildlife Sanctuary. It's the wildlife that keep us very busy here. The, the wildlife hospital admits almost 4,000 animals every year and that's where we spend most of our time. Uh, we'll show you a few cases, so come along with us. This, this little female, when she first came to us, she just lost her joey and she had a mastitis down here which is doing a lot better. I'm just going to express some milk out and just check to see if there's any, any evidence of infection in the milk still. But we'll get a much better idea through having a look at the milk under the microscope to determine if the, the infection has cleared away or not. That's great. She's got a belly full of food there. Don't go. <laughs> she gets nervous, doesn't she, when she's not against you? Okay. Although it's important that we secure the future, of our endangered species. It's also well recognised amongst our zookeepers that it's vitally important to secure the future of our more common species. Their numbers can rapidly decline without a great deal of notice and it's important that we have the maintenance or their husbandry techniques down pat early in the piece. <laughs> One of the strongest assets of the sanctuary is the people that it has attracted over the years. The people that have worked here are highly committed, they're passionate and interested in their fields. Those various fields, they recognise the importance of contributing to the long-term conservation of species globally. Give them a little bit of respect, they don't tend to be too bitey. I'm not quite brave enough to put my finger in his mouth. He has had a few teeth out, this guy, in the past. He's just showing his age a little bit. Um, you know, we like to give the old guys a bit of a check up to, to make sure all's going well and pick up problems before they actually develop into big problems. It's true that familiarity does breed contempt. In Australia we have had the luxury of having some of the most unique fauna on the planet. For the 200 years of European settlement we have been surrounded by such unique wildlife and I believe that we have taken it for granted. The rate of decline exceeds that of any extinction rate on the planet of any era, including that of the dinosaur era. It's mandatory that Australians recognise the importance of securing the future of their wildlife and they can do this by visiting somewhere like Kurumban Wildlife Sanctuary to support these programs. Yeah.